Okay, first thing you're going to see when you look at a paper, you're going to see this front cover. So there's spaces at the top for you to put your name, candidate number, the centre number, that's the number that links the place you do the exam to your exam. And then we've got the set of instructions. So first thing, you must have, we're going to need to make sure we've got everything ready for us so that when we start everything goes nice and smoothly. We're going to want a ruler. I've got my ruler, I've got my protractor, I have got my pair of compasses. Notice that I've already set it up with the pencil in there. I've got a pen to write with. Should be black ink or black ballpoint pen for the purposes of this, so you can see the answers. I'm going to do it in pink, but if we were doing this as a proper exam, black ink or black ballpoint pen. I've got a pencil. Just in case I need to do any graphs or diagrams, drawing. I've got a rubber to hand in case I need to make any changes to anything I'm drawing. And I've got a piece of tracing paper that I have asked for as soon as the exam has started. A quick note on highlighter use. You can use a highlighter to highlight anything at all that you like in the questions. You can highlight bits of diagrams, you can highlight words in questions, you can highlight as much or as little of that paper as you wish, but you must not ever highlight your answers. Your answers must be written in black ink or black ballpoint pen with pencils for diagrams. There must be no highlighter or coloured pen anywhere near your answer. In the question, however, you can have as many different colours of highlighter and as many different colours of pen as you wish to annotate or underline or circle key words, key phrases, key parts of the question. A quick note on calculator use in calculator papers. Make sure that your calculator is set up correctly before the exam starts. If you've never changed the settings on your calculator, it will probably be fine. But just maybe check a couple of standard calculations to make sure that your answers are displaying in the correct way. I would also strongly suggest that you do not buy a new calculator just before the exam. Or if you do, that you buy one of the same type you are used to using. You want to be familiar with your calculator by the time you get to the exam. You do not want to be sitting there learning how to use it. Be aware of how your calculator works in advance. A note on doing the questions in the paper then. The first thing to notice, we have got one hour and 30 minutes to do each paper. There are 80 marks in total for the paper shown there. And the marks for each individual question are shown in brackets. 80 marks in 90 minutes. We are looking at roughly one minute per mark, which should then allow you some time to do checking at the end. You are not going to stick to one minute per mark, but it is useful as a guide a five mark question should probably be taking you about five minutes then. And if it's taking you much longer than twice the number of marks there are for that question, you're probably taking too long on the question. It might be worth thinking about starting to move on to a different one. Pick up the marks elsewhere rather than get bogged down and lose marks later on because you run out of time. It is worth being mindful of the time. It is also worth being mindful of where you are starting in the paper. You do not necessarily have to start from question one. If you open the paper and you don't like question one, that's fine. Start with question two, start with question three, start somewhere else in the paper. Only thing I would suggest, do not start from the back. If you start at the back, yes, there are questions there that are worth more marks, but the majority of the marks are actually in the first half of the paper, the one and two and three mark questions earlier on, that are also generally easier to pick up marks on. So while you don't necessarily have to start from question one, you can start from any question at all that you like, I would strongly suggest you do not start from the back and work towards the front. However, the point is, if you open the paper and you panic at question one, that's fine. If you completely freeze, it's all right, don't worry. You've got time, shut the paper, take a breath, open the paper again at a different question, maybe pick question five or question 10, something like that. Choose a question that you like the look of and have a go. Once you're in, it'll start to flow and you will start to pick things up. The other advantage to leaving questions till the end and coming back to them is that you might do another question that sparks a memory. A different question might remind you how to do something earlier that you couldn't remember how to do at the time. 
It's also worth bearing in mind that with it being an exam paper, you are not necessarily going to get everything right. And you don't need to. It's not about getting everything right, it's about minimising the number of questions that you don't get right. Roughly, pass mark wise, we're looking at something around about 50 to 60% for a 4, and that's the old C, and we're looking at something about 10 or 15% more for a 5. Grade boundaries change each year but they are easy enough to dig out from previous years if you wanted to look at what they were. 